we now work through another exam style question involving the binomial theorem. We're asked to find the x to the power of negative 3 term in the expansion of the product of two binomials. The first being x squared minus 1 raised to the power of 3, the second being x plus 1 over x squared, all of which is raised to the power of 6. The way I like to do this is to focus on each of the two binomials separately. The idea being to find the general term for the first binomial, then we'll find the general term for the second. Finally, we'll multiply the two general terms together. So if I focus on this first binomial, we know from the binomial theorem that x squared minus 1 raised to the power of 3 is equal to the sum from r equals to 0 up to 3 of the binomial coefficient 3r times x squared raised to the power of 3 minus r times negative 1 raised to the power of r. And the general term of that binomial is the expression I'm underlining in green right now. And if you've seen my previous tutorials, you'll know that I like to call this t of r. Now, it's always a good idea to simplify the general term as much as possible. And looking at the one we have here, the only thing we really need to do is to distribute this power of 3 minus r across these parentheses. And in doing so, this middle term here will become x to the power of 2 times 3 minus r, so that becomes 6 minus 2r. So the general term for the first binomial is t of r, which equals 2, the binomial coefficient 3r, times negative 1 raised to the power of r, times x raised to the power of 6 minus 2r. And I'll go ahead and box that. Now that that's done, I do the same for the second binomial in the product. And I'll do that down here. Now the binomial theorem allows us to state that x plus 1 over x squared raised to the power of 6 is equal to the sum from p equals to 0 up to 6 of the binomial coefficient 6p times x raised to the power of 6 minus p times 1 over x squared raised to the power of p. Now, one thing you may notice here is that I've used the letter p instead of r in my expansion, and that is very important. And by the end of this tutorial, you'll know why that's important. For now, though, do make sure to always use a different letter, in other words, a different parameter, in each of the two general terms that you write. So the general term of this binomial is the expression I'm underlining now, and I'll call that t of p. And just as we did for the previous binomial, we need to simplify this expression as much as possible. And all we have to do here is simplify these powers of x. Looking at the last term in this product here, we can state that 1 over x squared raised to the power of p is equal to, in parentheses, x to the power of negative 2 raised to the power of p, and in turn that's equal to x to the power of negative 2p. Using that fact, we can state that t of p, the general term, is equal to the binomial coefficient 6p times x to the power of 6 minus p times x raised to the power of negative 2p. Finally, multiplying these two powers of x together, we add their exponents, leading us to the general term t of p equals to the binomial coefficient 6p times x to the power of 6 minus 3p. And that's the general term for this second binomial. And now here's the trick. Thanks to the two general terms we've just found and boxed, we can find the general term in the product of our two binomials. All we have to do is multiply the two general terms that we have here. And in doing so, we define this new general term, which I'll call t of r comma p, and that's equal to t of r times t of p. So that's the binomial 3r times negative 1 raised to the power of r times x to the power of 6 minus 2r, times the expression we have for t of p. So that's the binomial 6p times x to the power of 6 minus 3p. We now simplify this general term as much as possible, and the first thing I do is reorder it all. Indeed, I can state that this equals to the binomial coefficient 3r times the binomial coefficient 6p times negative 1 raised to the power of r times x to the power of 6 minus 2r times x to the power of 6 minus 3p. Now multiplying these two powers of x together, we add their exponents, 
which leads us to the general term t of r of p, which equals to the binomial coefficient 3r times the binomial coefficient 6p times negative 1 raised to the power of r times x to the power of 12 minus 2r minus 3p. And that's the general term of the product of those two binomials. And now that we have this, we're in a perfect position to find the x to the power of negative 3 term. Indeed, focusing on the power of x that we have inside this expression, we can now state that the x to the power of negative 3 term will occur when x raised to the power of 12 minus 2r minus 3p is equal to x to the power of negative 3. And now, since both sides of this equation are powers of the same base x, we can get rid of the x's altogether to write 12 minus 2r minus 3p equals to negative 3. Rearranging that, we find 2r plus 3p equals to 15. And I'll go ahead and box that. Now, what this result provides us with is a condition. So long as 2r plus 3p equals to 15, then we'll be dealing with the x to the power of negative 3 term. So our objective now is to find the values of both r and p, which lead to 2r plus 3p equals to 15. Now, remembering that r can take on all the integer values between 0 and 3 included, and p can take on all the integer values between 0 and 6 included, we can quickly state that r has to be an element of the set 0, 1, 2, 3, and p has to be an element of the set 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. One of the most efficient ways for finding the values of r and p, which lead to 2r plus 3p being equal to 15, is to use a two-way table. Here's what I mean. I'll quickly make a two-way table, something looking like this, and each row will correspond to a value of r. So r can take on the values 0, 1, 2, and 3, and each column will correspond to a value of p. So I'll just add those at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or 6. Now if I quickly draw the table, there we go. Remember each row corresponds to the different r values that we have and each column corresponds to the different p values we have. Now inside this table we'll write all the different values of 2r plus 3p. So just to be clear, each entry inside this table will be 2r plus 3p. We'll take care of this top row first, that is when r equals to 0. So if r equals to 0, the expression we have here, 2r plus 3p, simply becomes 3p. And so when p equals 0, that will be equal to 0. When p equals to 1, it will be equal to 3. When p equals to 2, it'll equal to 6, 9, 12, 15, and 18. And already, we can see that if r equals to 0 and p equals to 5, then 2r plus 3p will equal to 15. So I'll just circle that result there. We now complete the second row, and in this case, r is equal to 1. So when r equals to 1, this expression will become 2 plus 3p. In other words, all we have to do to find all the entries in the second row is add 2 to all the entries that we see directly above them. So that would be 2, 5, 8, 11, 14, 17, and 20. And we see right away that none of these values are equal to 15, so we carry on to the next row. And for this row, all we have to do is add 2 to all the values we just found. So those would be 4, 7, 10, 13, 16, 19, and 22. Again, we see that none of these values are equal to 15, so we carry on to the last row, for which all we have to do is add 2 to the row we just found. So we have 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, and 24. And here we can see that we have 15 again. Indeed, when both r and p are equal to 3, 2r plus 3p equals to 15. What this tells us is that there are two terms in the expansion of our product, which will be x to the power of negative 3 terms. To find those two terms, we use the general term that we have here, boxed in yellow, and we replace both r and p by the values we just found. So to be clear, for one of the values, we'll have r equals to 0 and p equals to 5. 
And for the second value, we'll have r equals to 3 and p equals to 3. And let me go ahead and box those two results. All right, we're nearly there. All we have to do now is calculate these two terms using the general term that we have here. And for that, let me start by making a bit of space. All right, let's start by calculating the general term when r equals to 0 and p equals to 5. So that would be t of 0, 5. And for that, we replace every single r that we see inside our general term by 0, and every single p that we see by 5. So that would be the binomial coefficient 3, 0, times the binomial coefficient 6, 5, times negative 1 raised to the power of 0, times x raised to the power of 12, minus 2 times 0, minus 3 times 5. Now, the binomial coefficient 3, 0 is equal to 1. The binomial coefficient 6, 5 is equal to 6. And negative 1 raised to the power of 0, well, that's equal to 1. And by all means check, but 12 minus 2 times 0 minus 3 times 5 is negative 3, which is exactly what we were after. So we can go ahead and state that the term t, 0, 5 of the product is equal to 1 times 6 times 1, which is 6, times x raised to the power of negative 3. And that's the first x to the power of negative 3 term taken care of. We now calculate the second one, when r equals to 3 and p equals to 3. So that's the term t, 3, 3. Now in this case, again, we use the general term that we have boxed in yellow here, and we replace every r, as well as every p we see, by 3. So that would be the binomial coefficient 3, 3, times the binomial coefficient 6, 3, times negative 1 raised to the power of 3, times x to the power of 12, minus 2 times 3, minus 3 times 3. Now the binomial coefficient 3, 3 is equal to 1, and by all means check, but the binomial coefficient 6, 3 is equal to 20. And negative 1 raised to the power of 3, well, that's equal to negative 1. And again, check, but 12 minus 2 times 3 minus 3 times 3 is equal to negative 3, which again is exactly what we're after. So we can state that the term t3, 3 is equal to 1 times 20 times negative 1, which is negative 20, times x to the power of negative 3. And we now have the 2x to the power of negative 3 terms. And I'm just boxing them in green right now. And to state our final answer, all we have to do is add the two terms that we've just found. In other words, the x to the power of negative 3 term is 6 times x to the power of negative 3 plus negative 20 times x to the power of negative 3. And adding those two terms together, we can state our final answer, negative 14 times x to the power of negative 3. And we're done. And that's it for this exam style question involving the binomial theorem.